Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm excited to journey with you as we take your health back. We are coming to you live from my on-the-road office in Waikoloa on the Big Island of Hawaii, and from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii, which is located in downtown Honolulu. Jay Fidel and Carol Mun Lee, my bosses of Think Tech Hawaii, wants to bring you content of interest from over 40 different show hosts. Today, I'm so honored to introduce to you a young genius of a man who's able to find his passion in life and turn it into his career. Today's show is titled, Hali Ka'ai Hui, Japan Joy Rides, Jamming, TV, Travel and Tunes. Yes, he does it all and he calls it work. Really, that's not fair. But today we shall be bringing you greetings and aloha and Polly's travels and journeys of random adventures. What Polly would like you to take away from today's show would be that you always must have appreciation and thankfulness while pursuing your passion. I just can't wait to get started and to let Polly share with you. But first, let's watch this short clip of getting to know Polly. Aloha, my name is Polly Kaihui and I was born and raised in Honolulu, Hawaii. Growing up in Kamiki during the 70s and 80s, from as early as I can remember, there were two constants that you could always hear and see in my parents' house. Music and the original KIKU Japan television. I never thought that these influences would evolve into hobbies that would one day turn into a career. Like 90% of my graduating Marinol High School class, I thought my path would entail enrolling at UH Manoa, graduating with a Bachelor of Arts degree, and hopefully finding a full-time job. However, for the last 20 years, I've been lucky enough to be able to share my love of music, travel to Japan monthly, and promote cross-culture experiences via television. My journey into music started in high school. The guitar was my main instrument that helped me transform ideas I had into actual songs. Years later, as a composer and performer, I released several CDs here and in Japan and was fortunate enough to win a number of Nahoku Hanohano Awards. In wanting to serve and help promote fellow Hawaii artists and our music industry, I became a volunteer board member of HARA, the Hawaii Academy of Recording Arts. I co-produced the annual Nahoku Hanohano Award Show for 10 years, was co-creator of the Hawaii Tourism Authority HTA supported month-long celebration of Hawaii's music, Mele Mei, and served as president of HARA from 2011 through 2019. During my time as president, I was able to establish licensing and co-production opportunities with a variety of broadcast, media, and production companies in Japan, resulting in the creation of Nahoku Hanohano-related concert series and festivals. While volunteering on the HARA Board of Directors, I was contacted by the Grammys National Academy of Recording Arts and Science. In addition to becoming a board member for their Pacific Northwest chapter, I've worked with the Grammy Awards Association for the last 10 years. This past October, the Hawaii Academy of Recording Arts contracted me to be the television director and producer of the 43rd annual Hoku Award Show and Web Broadcast. With the challenges and changes of the COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, further emphasized with the cancellation of all major cultural events and festivals, the Hara Board believed it was important that the Hoku still occur this year, and even though it would not be possible to have a live audience, we would still be able to celebrate our recording and performing artists, as well as provide viewers and music fans with amazing performances from Maui, Kauai, Hawaii Island, and Oahu. Wow. So it seems like, Polly, I, I, I gather you have a passion for music. It, is that a passion of yours, Polly? Yeah, it's definitely a, a, it's a passion. Sometimes it's a curse because, you know, these things don't work like they used to. <laughs> mm -hmm. so I don't know if they ever actually used to work the way they're supposed to. But, yeah, it is a passion. It's definitely a passion. Wow, that's amazing. You've accomplished so much. And in all those videos, I mean, like, where, where were you performing there then? Um, a couple of them were in Tokyo, uh, over at Tokyo Dome City. There's a there's a hall there that um, some of the performance clips are taken from. 
And then a few of those were at different Nahoku Hanahana Awards or from some of my uh, live venues that I played in across Japan, like some in Sapporo or some in Yokohama. Yeah, it's a mix of places. Yeah, you know, when I first saw you on TV, I actually thought you was a Japanese, you know, from over there. <laughs> and I said, wait, wait, how come you get that name, Kai Hui? You know, I was like, wow, yeah. right? So then Next. I like looked up, looked you up, and I thought, oh, brother, it's Noko. In fact, he went to the same high school as us, uh, me. So shout out to Marinol, the Spartans. Yep, Spartans. In the house. Okay, so that's, yeah. that's really cool. I tell you, and this world is so small. As we talk story, we find out that we know most everybody intertwined and some very close relations within your your network of friends so that's yes. that's amazing so i know on the next slide that we're going to be showing um mm -hmm. this it's quite a setup what you have on this slide i was like whoa what is this is this hollywood <laughs> so what do you enjoy the most about television and production you know like when we first started doing Tokuga tv um it was because i was a fan of all the stuff like the old Kiku television, you know, Sokuga Shiritai, because I grew up on that. Um, and then I got into, wow, we should do something that's kind of more updated, you know, and kind of showcase so much of Japan's great culture and food and people now. So that's how Doku got started. But here, what happened was I started getting into the actual production side of stuff. So filming, editing, directing. And this shot that the slide is on is uh, Melissa Chang, myself, and Amy Hill, which you know from 50 First Dates and Magnum P.I., we did a restaurant called Istanbul, and this is kind of our production setup for that filming. Um, all the gear is mine, uh, which is why I'm broke all the time. But, you know, it's also being able to good so I can learn how to use it properly and, you know, film and, and do that kinds of uh, stuff on top of being in front of the camera. Wow. So wait, now let me, can you repeat that? What is the location of that set that you set that up at? So that's Istanbul, Hawaii. They're right yeah. across the street from Whole Foods. Uh, yeah. It's Mediterranean type of Greek type of, you know, that type of cuisine and something that I'm not familiar with at all. So thankfully, Amy was there, who was a guest of ours, and Melissa Chang was there. So, she, you know, Melissa really helped explain what it is that we're eating. Everything just tasted good. That's all I can Oh, my gosh. Fantastic. And, and Polly, you know, that's the direction that we all really, you know, like with my show being Taking Your Health Back, that Mediterranean yeah. food diet is yes. the ultimate. It's yummy. It's flavorful. Yeah. It has all the different herbs that you never knew about, but it just makes yeah. even the hummus. Their hummus there is just outrageous. And as simple as chickpeas and sesame paste, tahini, you know, uh, and then they put their magic and their love in there with the mother and the daughter and um, yeah. just producing fantabulous food. And so, yes, yes. we got to go there more often and, and change our palates to receive that because the food there is um, very helpful. And mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just, I appreciate it so, so very much. So let's yep. continue yep. on our, our show journey. So besides being a composer and performer, the Nahoku Hanohano Awards is something you've been involved with for some time, man. I understand yeah. that last year, um, Threw a wrench in the whole mix. I understand that last year's hokus was quite a challenge while being a milestone mm -hmm. for HARA, mm -hmm. which stands for the Hawaii Academy of Recording Arts and the Recording Community. Can you share a bit about the 2020 hokus? Yeah, that was, um, it, it was definitely something that I was so proud to be a part of. Uh, I've been with HARA uh, for probably a little over 10 years, and I termed out as president in 2019. So it's in 20, um, it was obviously everyone had the most difficult 2020 and not being able to do events, not being able to do, celebrate like with like Mary Monarch, with Honolulu Festival, with Pan Pacific Festival. The Academy really wanted to still be able to do something for our artists because, you know, a lot of them did record, a lot of them do celebrate their music once a year and and this was the 43rd that was the 43rd year that you know it, it would have been that would have been um celebrated so there are some years early on and maybe a couple in between that weren't televised but it's always happened like there was it never 43 years straight the very first one was the alamana hotel so last year they decided okay we'll do it not so much virtually but we'll film it as a regular award show um, Hawaii Theater came on board, which that's why it looks amazing. You know, we have that yes. incredible, yeah, it just, it's so picturesque and beautiful. And uh, McKenna Maduli from Talk Story uh, oh, has the wow. honor of, of filming and working with. 
And Beautiful. of course, the Hawaii News Now, Hawaii News Now Ohana was so great. And then we filmed it. We filmed everything out of order. We filmed everything so that the one good thing was that we could actually really showcase the performances, which I was really happy. We could spend time with their edits and to make sure everything looked good and was lit properly. And um, we had the highest amount of viewership <laughs> on the awards. And the one big thing was usually the night of the awards are held at the convention center live and you would find out who won. And the winners would run up stage. Well, this time, everyone had to watch because we didn't tell who the winners were. So we filmed the people announcing it and the winner is and we cut. And then only myself and like two other people knew who the actual winners were. So I edited in the winning portion. And we told all of our members, anyone that's nominated to send in a thank you speech because no one knew who was going to win. So then we would edit in the one that actually won and then wow. played it out that way. Yeah. Well, that is the. I wondered how you did that part because you know just that <laughs> that suspense. You know that everyone had to yeah. pretend, but they didn't pretend. Yeah. They really knew. They didn't know. No, they, they didn't know. They didn't know, oh, and I didn't sleep for about really? a week straight because yeah, 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 it was quite a bear to oh. edit. But um, um, my DP uh, Michael Keeney, who I worked with for years with Tokoga, you know, he was instrumental in this all coming together. Of course, Janet Maduli and, and the horror board, Amy Hanayaliki. So, and the other thing we wanted to do is, is the first time that we would showcase performances from Neighbor Island. So over at the Mac, we had Amy and we had a few artists there. And then from uh, Hawaii Island, we had Mark Yamanaka. Um, we wow. had a couple of performances from there. And then from Kauai, we had Kupawa. So I was working with their editors uh, and people filming simultaneously and they would send in their stuff and then we'd format it for their show. So yeah, that made it a really wow. cool, uh, and, you know, to celebrate the 43rd annual and to really showcase, you know, the music and the artist, especially in a very challenging time. Well, that's, I'm glad you answered that for all of us because um, <laughs> that would have put the winner in a very odd predicament because they would know and they wouldn't be you know like how they have these shows and you have to keep quiet because you can't tell them because it's, it's going to air later yeah so you took that element out of a lot of um, the performers yeah. and i'm sure they all appreciated that because otherwise that would be very difficult for the winner to have to zip it and you know me Portuguese it would be so hard i would be like white hair already by the time the show aired yeah to pretend like i didn't know yeah. wow it's amazing. I love all of them. I love all of them, but I know none of them would but would, would have been able to actually keep it under wraps not. because of yeah. course not. So again, yeah. like I said, a genius of a young man you are, Polly. I applaud you. <laughs> Neither genius nor young, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, receive it, boy, receive it. <laughs> all right. So, you know, I just wanted to ask you, so how do you think we can help the musicians of Hawaii as they try to recover from 2020 and mm -hmm. the effects from COVID? I think on uh, for businesses, you know, and of course this would have to play together with the safety guidelines of, of, you know, we're in tier three right now, thankfully. Hopefully more people are still continuing to be diligent and wear masks. And as the vaccine continues to work its way through our community, you know, we'll be able to, they'll be able to have more opportunities to gather, you know, and to, to for businesses to actually have live music. You know, Blue Note, um, you know, it has yes. been starting up again. They have plexiglass in front of their stage. So Martha and the folks over there, I, I commend them for that. I think in supporting our artists definitely to watch them live when the opportunity is is available. And a lot of them do um, online performances now. So by all means, you know, they have like a virtual tip jar. You know, if you can, you know, Kukua, if you can, you know, and yes. obviously buying their stuff on iTunes or you know any of the digital platforms where you can purchase their music, that all helps. You know, and I think that um, uh, that's something that in 2020 we didn't really have the light at the end of the tunnel. We just kind of had the, you know, the doom of when is this going to be over. So I we think just had the that's really yeah, exactly exactly. So now we actually have the ability to to you know kind of look at wow, this is really. It's over the horizon. We can see it now, you know. So for for our artists, definitely support by buying their music. Watch them online when they perform. Uh, a lot of them have Facebook, you know, live live performances. Um, and for the venues, you know, I, as more of these places start to say, hey, you know, this is going to be Henry's going to be on here, Blue Note, or Kimie, or Anuhea, or Isaac, you know, go out and support if you can, you know. Yes, and and some even hotels and stuff. 
Yes, go and grab a bite, go to one of the restaurants, support our restaurateurs, yeah. and then go have a night out and listen and be entertained and let your heart just soak it all up and just yeah. escape, you know, into yes. their into their world of great uh, entertainment. I just love it. I just yeah. truly, truly love it. So I'm going to ask you a question, Pali. I said, I okay. just want to know, and I'm sure a lot of people want to know, can you share with us any special projects that you are currently working on? Um. One of the things that was started in 2020 it was a series called Ho'ola Hawaii, which um, takes place takes place at the Mauna Loa Gardens. And mm -hmm. it's funny because, you know, I remember going to high school or whatever. I remember it's beautiful, but having not gone back in so many years and actually going there and scouting the area, it's so beautiful. And there's so many spots within the gardens that look, you know, that are independent of the other spots in the garden. So we started that series in 2020. Um, and that's been one of the, like, the things that I've been proudest to be associated with, um, with that show. Uh, we're continuing filming this year as well. Um, there's a couple of other, a couple of other projects uh, involving um, Kyushu, Southern Japan Tourism and Government. And they're, um, you know, they really want to reach out to Hawaii folks. And uh, a few years ago, I had the opportunity to work with Hokkaido, with Hokkaido Television, you know, and bring their show Love Hokkaido here to Hawaii. So we want to kind of do that for Kyushu, Southern Japan side too. That's also in the works, and um, yeah, a couple of uh, a couple of more music projects. I'll be behind the camera again. That's coming up, and unfortunately, I can't say what it is yet because I signed an NDA. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, it, it, you'll you'll know it when you see it. Put it that way. <laughs> All right, I knew it, I knew you you put in, but I thought if I did ask, you maybe give us a teaser. <laughs> so we're gonna just keep looking for you and the productions that's yet to come and i know there must be many in the, in the pipeline because you yeah, can't keep us away from all that great hawaiian music so <laughs> that's the first part of you know what i really wanted to talk to you about uh mm -hmm. how you support the local entertainers and entertainment here in the Hawaii. but there's also another side of you and i have uh, another video that we collected from your uh, resources that will show another side of what you do Pali. so let's watch this video Hello. Music helped my second passion, a love and fascination with all things Japan, turn into an actual occupation that fostered and fueled my love of video production and television. Winning my first Hoku Award brought me back to Japan as a performer, and this reignited an idea I had about trying to create a modern day version of the beloved Kiku television show, Soko ga Shiritani. This concept, funded by my day job and lots of sweat equity, resulted in the creation of the weekly television show, Dokoga TV Japan Mania, and later a joint production with Hokkaido Television Broadcast with their program, Love Hokkaido. Dokoga TV and Love Hokkaido both showcase must-see attractions, culture, history, cuisine, and touring of Japan and Asia, airing on Hawaii News Now's KHNL and K5. In parallel to my work in Japan, I wanted to channel my efforts in videography to help promote Hawaii's music and performers. Music-centric TV shows, K5 Melee, The Music and Manao series, and Moanaloa Gardens, Ho'ola Hawaii were launched. These programs celebrate long-standing traditions, Hawaiian music artists and celebrated entertainers to local, national, and international audiences. As viewership for Dokoga TV and Love Hokkaido started to grow, several opportunities had arisen. In 2016, I was appointed as Hokkaido Smile Ambassador, a goodwill ambassador program established by the Hokkaido government. Interest in Japan tours of the cities and locales I had filmed also grew, and partnering with Nonstop Travel, JTB, and Hawaiian Airlines resulted in Dokoga TV themed tours in Japan and Asia. genius part of this genius of a young man so your show dokuga tv is filmed in japan or it was or is yes. okay but this looks like you're enjoying sushi with chef dk kodama are you featuring yeah. Hawaii segments now as well yeah you know um usually prior to 2020 i was in japan once a month either to film or for meetings or for tours and of course not being able to fly and go back um, 
one of the things that I had started on the show years ago was a segment called Oishi Iroi, which was to feature good restaurants here. And when it started, it was actually a way to kind of help my friend's restaurant, you know, either plate lunch places or actually good Japanese food. And so we resurrected Oishi 808 and we did that. Um, and also wanted to feature restaurants like, you know, with there with DK over at Vino's. There, there are a number of restaurants, um, Roy's, Chai's, DK, and Miley's that are doing, you know, they, they represent great food, right? Great and food. But they're doing in this kind of very challenging time, special like family meals, you know, where you can get a, you know, Roy's had a, a surf and turf for four for like, 70 bucks is filet mignon and lobster. And you can't get that for like one person if you go to a restaurant, let alone four. So a lot of these restaurateurs and these owners are doing stuff to really help, you know, be able to provide the level of food and great dining experience at home. You know, so you enjoy it from the safety of your own home and right. not dress up and not have to put on makeup and not have to, you know, so. Wait, wait, wait. You, you can dress up and put makeup in when you eat chai. <laughs> you can. You, you can. <laughs> I it's do. It's optional. It's optional. I, I'll admit I don't. I skip makeup for that one. But yeah, so, you know, it's really that was in a, a way that we also wanted to help, you know, local restaurants um, that were really doing things on the community. And, other, you know, and then also, too, for like small businesses that I've been able to kind of befriend over the years. Cloud Nine in Market City was another one we did. They have the best boba drinks and souffle pancakes that are Japanese inspired. So that's what we're filming here in the islands too. So that's, yeah, that's how they kind of reincorporated into the show, into the series. Wow. And thanks to you, Pali, for continuing to promote the local, not just entertainers, but also the local restaurateurs, which are using locally grown foods, you know, and yeah. sourcing the local talent to continue to survive a lot of different businesses, which is most important. And that's what this show is all about. And I know that's where your heart is as well, Pali, is to continue just to encourage and enhance wh where we're at right now in this point and just keep promoting and going forward. So mahalo to you for that in advance. If no one's you. mahalo, you can. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank <laughs> so, you. You're welcome. So I know that Dokuga TV has a new co-host. What? You was lonely. <laughs> so you brought up. <laughs> Always. <laughs> I know it's a celebrated and award-winning journalist. And she's one yeah. of our former Miss Hawaii, which I've been working yeah. with for the last five years. So yeah. I'm really happy and excited that uh, TV personality, I know her as Olena Rubin. Right. That's right. And, That's right. Yeah. And so how did you two meet? And what's in store for local God TV viewers? Um, we actually met because uh, Hokkaido, we did a, a familiarity trip to Hokkaido. So, which is for those that don't know, it's kind of like for media to help promote destinations in that area. So it was myself, it was um, Melissa Chang, uh, Yumi Ozaki and Olena jumped on. So but we were there, she would, she had a commitment. She, she could only be there for like two full days. And she just had a sharp throat, so she didn't have a voice. But it was still, yeah, but it was still fun to work with her. And she was a champ, you know, she really, you know, she really did uh, uh, make it very entertaining and a lot of fun. So yeah. we had an opportunity. Um, I partner with, or I've been very thankful to be partnered with Nonstop Travel and Hawaiian Airlines for the show. And Nonstop Travel had an Alaska tour on the Norwegian cruise line, The Bliss. Yeah. And I was like, hey, that would be kind of fun to have Olena on there. So I asked her, and she's like, yeah, I'm game. So we did the show and like a video diary series of our experiences through Alaska on the ship. And it was probably one of our most highly viewed, you know, episodes, that series that we did. And we had such great chemistry and it's so much fun. And and she's also into like extra sauce on her stuff, which I'm into. Ooh, and big time extra sauce. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> gotta have extra sauce. And, gotta. Even if um, I gotta pay for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Bill I don't me. care. Yeah. And she's also a vodka fan. So we, we <laughs> had a lot of fun on the tour. And uh, yeah, I'm so happy that she's a co-host of the show. Wow. Um, I also have a, a variety of guest co-hosts. Um, Melissa Chang being one of them, our mutual friend. Um, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. You know, it's been great to have them on the show. Olena, too, really... We, we just met the other day, in fact, talking about the uh, travel toward the end of the year and other local things that we're going to film together, uh, as well as, of course, hopping around the globe in 2022. So 
Yeah. Well, you're on track again there because you got two very beautiful and outstanding co-hosts, Olena. They're and way smarter than I am, so that works. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got the beautiful sandwich going, right? The, the two there of them here in the middle. There you go. There you go. See how brilliant yeah, just... you are. <laughs> I told you, and you know, I'm glad that you're featuring Alaska because people just know Hawaii is loving uh, Vegas, but of course, oh, uh, white people love Japan and they love mm. love Alaska. Yeah, yeah. And Alaska once you fantastic. go there, oh, it's amazing the fishing and all the fresh catches that you can bring in. Just, yeah. I love it, and I can't wait to go back as well. We had great times yeah. there. Wow. Yeah, so speaking agree. about traveling, with the tra uh, challenges of travel last year, when was mm -hmm. the last time you went to Japan, Pali? Um, I went in December, actually. So I got to celebrate Christmas there um, and New Year's. Yeah, you, you got to uh, to get a visa for it. Um, and then, yeah, uh, you need a visa. And there's a big Gundam statue that I'm a huge fan of. Uh, had to get a visa and do a lot of paperwork before I went. But I also wanted to kind of, you know, document what the process is like to travel during COVID, you know, right. thankfully things will be, um, you know, not as, uh, I guess, as um, crazy as they were, you know, going right. in. But even with that said, you know, I flew Hawaiian Airlines over there. I got, I got my test before I left. When you okay. land they, at the Rita airport, they give you another test and then okay. you wait for the results. And then you're allowed to leave, but you can't take public transportation. Um, but you, you, but that's what you have. They have private ones you can arrange and stuff too. And then you have to quarantine for two weeks. So um, that's something that I kind of wanted to see what the process was like. And right. also, there was a lot of meetings too for for uh, with clients for businesses that are going forward, and for our tours and filming going forward for this year and next year. So, and that was the first time, to be honest. Like usually during Christmas. Uh, right around the 23rd or so to the first week of January, no one does work. In, I mean, they work in Japan, but you don't do meetings or you don't do planning right. stuff because right. they're all doing celebrating and closing right. out the year. Nomikai, which is like the after drinking party and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. And yeah, but this is the first time that everyone, because everyone's been affected by it, you know, right. COVID, that I, we were meeting up Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. You know, wow. January so 1st was off limits, January 2nd. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're like, oh, we'll meet. Well, yeah, come down, we'll meet. You know? better. So, yeah. Yeah. So that was kind of, that was, you know, really telling us to, to show that everyone is, you know, very passionate and hungry to oh. um, kickstart business back again. To yeah, yeah. yeah, it's normal. Yes. Yeah. Wow. So I want to just sneak this one in. So how, how has COVID impacted your work both locally and in Japan? Well, in Japan, it's uh, it's kept me away from Japan up until December, and I was going to go back. Actually, I was supposed to be back there right now to cover the ten year anniversary for the um, you know, the tsunami, the the Tohoku um, yes. tsunami and earthquake. Uh, but they're still under lockdown right now for foreigners, yes. Yes. so it's really affected business in a sense, not being able to do tours with nonstop travel, not being able to film there. Um, we had some pretty big uh, things that we were worked out for filming for our next focus for the show, um, as well as uh, obviously Olympics, which was supposed to be last year. And um, so that's, that's been a huge you know, thing, but locally it was one of the things that to be honest with you, I was really worried about because, you know, that's without that business going on, you know, locally here, of course, everyone is suffering here. But I was very um, thankful to have, you know, opportunities like Hola Hawaii with Monolo Gardens and, wow. and to, you know, be able to be hired as director producer for the Hokus this year for television. Um, a, and this, that's a great feather in your cap. I mean, no, no, it, it's, yeah. it's, you know, I, I'm so thankful to be, to be able to have those opportunities and other little production jobs that have come up. So uh, it's kept me pretty busy and my, Iki, Kini, very busy, and our crew. So for that, eternally thankful. For that. Wow, and we're, well, we run out of time right now, but we are eternally grateful to you and your staff and your team that was able to pull that off in a most professional and profound way to kind of make things normal for us at home with all that great entertainment and talent. So Thank you, Andy. we've got to say goodbye to you right now, but I know there's more great works coming down the pipeline with you and all the talents that you're, you can gather. So keep up the great work.
congratulations to you and we look forward to seeing more of your great works so mahalo thank very you much, mahalo to you uh, yeah mahalo. aloha aloha